from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yes! That's awesome! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I'm going to talk about something in this segment of the program that uh, I'll bet has happened to you. <laughs> it happened to me. I've talked uh, about this subject primarily to women. Because apparently there's a lot of guys who do this. And I think the reason they do it is because it will help them get laid. I don't think it's necessarily because they're serious. Some may be serious. But I think it's something men do to get laid. And so many women called in and said, oh, yes, that's happened to me. But now I want to talk to you about somebody that I had an experience with that uh, I was just thinking about this the other day. That, um, in fact, has happened to me more than once. And maybe it's happened to you. Let's talk about that. Let's take the individual I'm thinking about, although there were more than one. So you go out with somebody and you notice that the female is unusually willing to get physical really fast. Now, you know me, I think that's fantastic. <laughs> it's very rare that I wouldn't jump right in. Okay? But let's say it's happened to you. Okay, you... You meet a chick, and you're expecting she's going to put up some resistance. You're expecting you're going to have to tell her a few tall tales or get a few drinks into her. In the particular case I'm talking about, I met a woman, and uh, it was she who said, I'm nervous being around you. And I said, why are you nervous? She says, I don't know. I'm just nervous. Something about you makes me nervous. And then she said she needed to have a few shots. You with me? I did not suggest that she get drunk. I did not suggest that she drink. I did not suggest anything. All I said was, uh, hello. I came to have dinner with her, essentially. By the way, she was making dinner. So don't, don't get any ideas that I spent a lot of money. She was making dinner. Never been on a date with this chick in my life. I met her a couple of times. Now I'm at her place. And she's making dinner and she's telling me she's nervous and she'll see, so she needs to have a couple of shots. And so she does. Early in the evening, she says, don't get the idea anything's going to happen. And I've heard that before. It's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, first is a couple of shots, and then she says, I know you, you like wine. Uh, why don't you uh, open a bottle of wine? And she had some really good wine, and I opened it. So now she's uh, piling on some wine on top of the shots. And pretty soon, I, I don't think dinner was done two minutes. Pretty soon, she is hanging all over me. 
And before long, body parts are exposed. I mean, this just hit me. Bam. In fact, even I was it. Even I was a little. I don't want to say freaked out because you love to see fast action like that, but this was like head spinning. You don't see chicks do that very often. You know, they at least make you wait for it a little bit or something. There was no effort required. This was like Domino's Pizza. It was delivered in 30 minutes or less. It seemed like that. Anyway, it was just amazing. Now, the fact was that we went on and on and on like this, and uh, we consummated the deal. And then I did my usual. And you know what my usual is. I looked at my watch and I said, oh, my God, look at the time. And she lived down in O.C. somewhere, and I live in Hollywood, and it was late, like 3 a.m., And the alcohol had worn off. Mostly I sweated it out of me. And she wanted me to stay. And I said, no, 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 no. Got to go. Got meetings. Got things going on tomorrow. Got to go. So I uh, stepped out her front door, found my car, drove off, headed back to Los Angeles. And I thought that way the guys feel on a night like that. When something like that happens, I was feeling pretty self-satisfied. I was feeling good. I was feeling like, well, yeah, what just happened there? That was fantastic. No effort required. No money spent. Minimum amount of time wasted. This is pretty good. I can't believe how good it was. I'm driving home. You ever have that time when you're driving home after something like that and your mind is super focused? You kidding me? I pulled off at the AM, PM, picked up uh, like a tanker of Coke to take me home. I'm sucking down the Coke and I've got just a little tinge of sweat left and i got the air conditioning going and I've got the music playing and I'm thinking to myself, this is pretty good. Pretty good. Next day, she starts sending text messages, and you know me about text messages. I'll answer every third text message if you're lucky. And I probably won't answer my phone for a couple of days after I see you. So the calls are coming in, and the text messages are coming in. And it starts off with the usual, did you get home okay? What time did you get home? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm answering them in my best Jack Webb dragnet style. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. I'm just answering the questions. I'm not doing the usual thing that people love to do. Wow, we have so much in common. You like to breathe. I like to breathe. You like drinking water. I like drinking water. (laughs) You like the Dodgers. I like the Dodgers. It was none of that. It was just, what time did you get home? Got home by 3.45. You have trouble getting home? No, no traffic. Just zipped right up. Zipped up the 57. (laughs) Zipped across the 60. Zipped up the 101. I was all set. Done. We should do that again sometime. Yeah, we should. Okay. Well, then it takes a, a completely different turn. She says, I really do hope I'm going to see you soon. I said, why? She says, because you know I'm in love with you. Uh, What? Yeah, she says, I'm in love with you. Now, let's start with this. Do I really want that kind of scenario? Do I want that? No. But on top of this, if I did want it, would I really want a woman who just, you know, invited me to dinner and essentially seduced me? Do I want to then say, oh, yes, I love you? 
Do I want to be in a relationship with somebody like that? My answer is no. I mean, how can you be in love with me? You don't know me. You hardly knew me at all before I had dinner with you. Uh, during the evening we spent, you didn't get to know me much better because uh, we ate dinner and then you essentially attacked me. So I think there's something weird about somebody who tells you they're in love with you, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. The phone calls, the text messages, the emails describing her love for me. Now, you know me. <laughs> I was pretty shocked and pretty blown away by this. I had no idea how this happened. What the hell did I do? I mean, yes, I know I was just being my charming self, and uh, of course I know I'm irresistible. But how in the world did this woman, who hardly knew me, decide not only that she wanted to ride me like a pony, but now she's in love with me? I mean, she couldn't just ride me like a pony. There had to be this other component. You know, if she rode me, like, made me dinner and rode me like a pony, I could live with that. But no, as always, there is no free lunch. There is a price to be paid. And I had to pay that price if I wanted this to continue. I had to respond in kind. Something I was not going to do at all. At all. Have you ever been with somebody like that? Have you ever been with somebody who, like, you don't even know why? Like, you hardly know them. Like, maybe you had good sex or... Maybe you had one interesting conversation. I want to talk to the guys only, though, because the chicks, let's be honest. I know you have guys telling you they're in love with you all the time because they want to get laid. But I don't think that's something that, that women do with guys. When a chick tells you she's in love with you, generally, I think she's in love with you. Or maybe she wants your cash only. But this chick had her own job, her own career, her own money. She didn't need my cash. Didn't need my cash. She had her own gig, her own thing. So I'm wondering, has this ever happened to you? Have you ever been with a woman who said to you, like, like right out of the gate, you know I'm in love with you. And maybe she proceeded to be a little obsessive about it, or a lot obsessive about it. Late night calls, late night knocking on the door, late night visits. Wondering who else you're dating. Starting to become all kinds of possessive. Based on nothing. The two of you had a nice conversation. Or maybe you boned her good one night and suddenly she's just gone off the deep end. Have you ever been with somebody like this? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. Everybody should listen to exactly what you say. And if they do follow it to the team... Then it'll work, period. That's, that's it. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. I just couldn't believe it when it happened to me. Met a woman who, uh, you know, invited me to her home for dinner. I had dinner. I got the job done. I left late at night. And pretty soon I was showered with uh, text messages, emails, phone calls. She is in love. Ever been in a situation like that? one 800 800 tom It's Brandon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, player? Not much. Tell me. So is she Mexican? No. Oh, all right, all right. I just know this happens a lot more than me with the Mexican girls, but yeah, I'm Mexican. I um, met a girl about a year and a half ago at a taco stand. I came out of a club, and she gave me her number. She was just kind of slutty, so I thought she probably came out of a club, but ended up being she came out of a strip club. And uh, she dances and stuff. She invited us to a party the next day. Me and my friends went down there, partied it up, you know, slept with a few of them. Next thing you know, the next day, she's uh, blowing me up, 
telling me, you know, she's in love with me, sprung and everything. She wants to come by. So I ended up seeing her a couple of times, but she didn't tell me on the, on the love stuff. I didn't really get into that. I just kind of texted over that. I didn't see it. And she never paid it on mine, really. And then she started telling me more stuff when I started seeing her a couple of times. And then she wanted me to hit it with no condom on. And that's when I just kind of cut it. Oh, boy. Yeah, it was getting a little too much with that one. Really? Unbelievable. I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Do you? I don't, but, yeah, you were doing something right. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's the case, too. I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Kevin is listening to our online stream on Long Island on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, it is the chicks that have daddy issues that do this type of thing. Really? It is. I'm, it's happened to me two times, and the most recent time it happened, I picked up a girl who I uh, met on the Internet, just started talking to me, and uh, she wasn't really that attractive of a girl. She was only like a seven, but I figured maybe if I hang out with her, she'd have hot friends or something, maybe we could work something out. I uh, picked her up one day uh, on the way to the beach, and we went to the beach so I could ride a few waves, and she was just kind of keeping me company. And she got on and on talking about blah, 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 about how her parents were divorced and this and that. And then after I dropped her off, and I haven't seen her since, it's been a few weeks, she has been nonstop with the calls and the text messages, and I don't even bang her. And she's telling me how she misses hearing from me and this and that, and I'm just like, oh, my God, what did I do to cause her to become so attached? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Neither do I. It's the dad, I'm telling you, it's the ones who have some type of issues with their dads not being in the picture, and they're, they're looking for someone to fill that, that gap that's missing if, if they need it. I, you know, I think you might be right. I think you might be onto something. I, I do believe, and I've said this before, there are women out there who are like the playwright or the, the pr play producer. They're, they're casting a play, and they're looking for someone to play the part of boyfriend. Right. And, and uh, you know, you didn't realize it when you were banging her or almost banging her or, or, or having dinner with her, but you were auditioning for the part, and you got the part. There were no, going to be no callbacks. There were going to be no second auditions. Nothing was running up a flagpole. Bam, you're hired for the job. It seems it seems like a lot of women they approach situations with their mind already made up, and they kind of just hung out. She hung out with me once, and she was just already realized that I was something she wanted. And it's amazing how women can do that. I don't get it. I don't get it either, Tom. But you know what? We must be doing something right, like the last caller said. <laughs> that well, that's that's exactly right. I like to think that. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Here is Paul on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great. First time, long time, brother. First time, Thank long time. Thank you. Yeah. Man, I got this girl comes into my job one day, right? I don't know her from nobody. And, uh, you know, she starts giving me the eye, you know, being all nice. And, you know, how they touch on you and stuff and blah, blah, blah. So she gets me her number, asks me to give her a call up. So I figured I'd do the Tom Likas thing, you know, go out and meet her, spend the 40 bucks. Well, next thing I know, she's like, no, let's just go back to my house, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then she starts going, hey, how about, you know, we'll get you some drinks. All right, you know, I got to drive later. She's like, no, 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 don't worry about it. She keeps pumping me with drinks, pumping me with drinks, trying to get me messed up. So I make the wrong decision, tries to get me in bed with no condom on until I pass out. Next thing I know, she's waking me up at like 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, hey, hey, how you feeling? You ready to go now? I'm like, what? You know, she's like, yeah, yeah. She tries to get me, you know, to do the job again with no condom on. I'm like, nah, I don't feel like. So she starts waking me up to try and feed me some more drinks. And this girl just wouldn't stop. She keeps trying to get me drunk, so I make the wrong decision. Unbelievable. Do you believe? I know. And she wasn't even drinking it, you know? She just keeps trying to feed me. Hey, rum and coke, rum and coke. Uh, one after another. And then I pass out. I'm so, she got me so drunk, I pass out. And then she tries to wake me up at 2 o'clock in the morning to get me to do the business, you know, when I'm still groggy. And she tries to get me up, starts getting, hey, how about another drink? And I, I just couldn't believe it. 
Unbelievable. So, so, so can you imagine how many guys get nailed that way? I could have. I could have. I mean, I was out of it. And when I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning, all I had was on, you know, she was trying to get me to get up. And you know how they try and rub on your thighs and come on and have another drink. And I'm groggy. I'm out of it, man. I didn't know what was going on. You know, and she just keeps trying to feed me drinks so I try and make the wrong decision. Unbelievable. <laughs> you know, you're lucky. You are lucky that it ended up like that. I could have made the wrong move, man, you know, because when you're half asleep, you don't know if you're dreaming or if you're awake, you know, and you're laying in bed on, you know, and they back up against you and stuff, and they try and rub on you. You don't know if you're asleep. I mean, that happened to me one time. You know, I woke up, I had a dream about getting with this girl, you know, give her the, giving her the sausage love, and, you know, next day... I wake up, she's like, Do you remember us having sex last night? I said, No, but I had a dream about it. She's like, No, no, we did. I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Man, I thought I was dreaming. I thought I dreamt the whole thing. But it wow. happened. It would happen. I passed out, got drunk, and you know, I had a dream about having sex with her and I woke up the next day and she's like, Do you remember having sex with me? I was like, I had a dream about it. She's like, No, it happened. <laughs> oh jeez. Unbelievable. That's, it's crazy, man. This is how they do you nowadays, man. You got to watch out for the girl. Don't worry about getting her drunk. You got to worry about her getting you drunk. Boy, you're not kidding about that. Thank you for that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's Scott on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. What's cracking, Tom? Somebody's ass. As soon as I get out of here. <laughs> there it is. Well, check this out. I was at a club. I was. I went to the club by myself just to go check it out. Girl keeps bumping into me. I get out of the way because she's not too what, like a seven or six. I was loving into her. Her friend says, "Yo, my my friend's really into you." So I'm like, "Okay." I look at her. I'm like, "Well, it's very late at night. There is no one else around that um, that I really want." So I go with her. We start going talking. Now, granted, I've only talked to her for one hour. Go back to her apartment. We do the deed, and now the very next day, she's like. Oh, this is great. So I really like you and all. I go out there again. We do the deed. Now she's saying, I love me. I love me some Scott. I love me some Scott. And I'm sitting there going, love two times. I just met her. 48 hours. And she loves me? So, I mean, I was like, what the hell is that all about? So what did I do? I kept it going for about four months. No, to December to March. I'd be afraid to do that. Well, I did it, and here's the thing. I made it perfectly clear. She was not my girlfriend. I dated other women. I told her that. She had it in her mind that she was going to change my mind about her and make her my girlfriend. She was determined. She gave me so much sex. She tried to do the no condom thing, and I was like, no, 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 no. I got this. I brought my own condom for till March. She bought me a Valentine's Day present. I didn't buy her a Valentine's Day present. She bought me. She went over, dropped it off, and she was just keeps going. Finally, she lost hope, and then she got angry, and she was like, how could you do this to me? How could you pay me along like that? And I'm sitting there going, pay you along? She's like, I loved you. I'm like, I never said I loved you. I never said you're my girlfriend, but I'm not going to turn it down. So I... I I had been close to four months of a good time, and then luckily she wised up and broke away. But, dude, Tom, you're pretty much right. The women have a certain role, and you're going to fill it. And that other dude talking about a, a father figure thing, he's kind of right, too, but their minds are made up, and now all of a sudden they say, Bing, you're bachelor number one, and no matter what happens, you are the one she wants. You are like the best guy that she's ever been with, and you haven't done a damn thing. She's convinced herself. And I wonder, Tom, what do you think? How many marriages have started that way? I think there are guys who are complete uh, 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 pussies um, who would feel guilty if they didn't go along and would just say, okay, uh, yeah, I love you too. True. And, and uh, check this out. So they do get married. And then all of a sudden, maybe a year, two years after the first kid, that delusional part that in her mind stops. All of a sudden, she's like, oh, my God, what have I done? I don't love him. And now she wants half his money. Ouch. Does, I mean, that, that could be a reality. I, I was just thinking about that. I'm like, you know, that temporary insanity because they want a man. They want, they're in love with the fact of being in love. They don't love you. They just love be being in love. 
And then all of a or sudden, more importantly, we- they decided they've turned fill in the age, 25, 30, 35. They decide that now it's time uh, to be in a relationship and poof, I'm in one with him. Here it is. Um, by, by the way, I have to admit, the woman I was talking about, she was 28 years old. I was 22. And... Yeah, she had her mind made up that I was going to be the father of her children. And I was like, I never signed up for that. I'll let you, I'll practice with you, but I'm not going to finish the deed. But uh, that's all i got to say. This is something for the fellows to think about. These women got you pegged for the next father of their child. Whether they want, really, really, really want to or not, that's what they're trying. So uh, just think twice and wrap it up if you're going to go with it. Boy, and no I'm kidding. And can you uh, take me out old school with a toilet? I certainly can. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Frank on the Tom Like is show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? This is Frank Hi. from Inglewood, man. Long time, first time. Thank you. Hey, man, I was going to um, call you to let you know I picked up this girl at a club, right, for the last hour or so. She wasn't bad for a Wednesday night, right? We went back to my place, started hanging out, started kicking it, do I sing, right? So I'm, I let her know, like, hey, I'm really tired. Why don't you get out? Why don't you get out? And she still wants to hold my hand, caress my hair, just keep look, keeps looking at me. I'm like, hey, uh, you know, you have to go now. And she didn't want to leave. The next day, she called me all day long, called me, called me, called me about how much she misses me, text messages, because I wouldn't pick up a phone call no more. And yeah, man, I'm glad I got you in my life, man, because otherwise, I would not know what to do with these girls, and I will probably have been married by now. That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> You're a great guy, Tom. I appreciate your service. Uh, well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate the call. Jesus. They call. They blow up the phone. They blow up your phone with text messages. They confront you. You know I love you, don't you? You know that, right? Oh, my. God, you're killing me. 1-800-5800-TOM. Have you ever been with a woman like this? You know, one evening, one day, whatever, and then she tells you, unlike guys who'll say anything to get laid, she tells you, she loves you. What is that all about? Does this happen to you? Maybe there's a woman out there who can explain it. 1-800-5800-866. Jose on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm First doing time. okay. Yeah. So I go out this night and um, I met this girl at a club. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we get, went to the hotel after that night and... Um, Next day, she wanted me to go to the bank to put me on her account. <laughs> so we waited. We waited a couple of months, right? And, um, yeah, so I ended up... Hey, hey, zero tolerance policy. One yeah. curse word. Yeah, one curse word and you're done. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Have you ever been with a chick who, right out of the gate, one evening, one date, told you she was in love with you? Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I've been gone from her for about two years now, and it is just clear thing. It is worth it. Now I go out all the time with different girls. It's a blast. Now, I don't know what I was thinking, imprisoning myself. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the program. We appreciate it. Unbelievable. What's unbelievable? Well, not just our top. But um, if you pay attention, there's now more me every hour. I'm not making this, you know, I know there's a lot of hyperbole, a lot of people say. Now there's more programming than ever. Now there's more of this, now there's more of that. 
Now there's less advertising. Guess what? We now have uh, two extra minutes an hour. And that's pretty substantial in the radio business. I will tell you. We uh, now have uh, more time to talk to you. It's just you and me and now two more minutes of me. <laughs> I don't engage in all the phony hyperbole. I will tell you when it's the real deal, and I'm telling you right now. There's two more minutes of me every hour. Every hour. So I hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> or two more minutes to get pissed every hour. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Have you ever been with a chick who just said, you know, hey, I'm in love with you, like right out of the gate? Luis on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Louis. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Good to hear. Uh, first of all, I want to send a shout out to all the cops in the fire freeway. I'm violating the law by talking to Tom Likas on my cell phone. <laughs> yeah, they understand. I'm talking to my dad. That's right. Hey, um, I don't know the situation you're talking about, but I want to talk about this one in particular. Uh, I don't know if you've been in that situation where you, you know, you're done doing your thing. And right after you get that question that goes, so what are we now? <laughs> I've, been, I've been put in that situation so many times, and I can't seem to be able to get the right answer or give the right answer. Because last time it happened to me, I said, I don't know, I guess we'll take it slowly. We're friends. Never got to see the chick again. So Unbelievable. What yeah, it's... Tricky, because if you say, well... Why would anyone expect anything after one date? No. I know, it's it's crazy. I mean, we just did our thing, and right after, right after, she's like, so uh, what are we now? What do you think of me? What, what do I think of you? I don't know, you look good naked, I guess, but... Uh, <laughs> what else? It's a tricky question, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure a lot of guys out there get that question. So what are we now? Or uh, are we, like... Am I your girlfriend? Am I your date? Am I your squeeze? Am I your fiance? I don't know. What do you do there? What 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 question? I mean, what answer do you give if you want to, you know, keep boning the girl, but you know, not with a serious relationship kind of thing? <laughs> there's there's no free lunch. That's what it turns out to be, Luis. No uh, free lunch. Hi, man. Thank you so much for your advice. Could you take me out with a, uh, old, let me see, Compton style and uh, flush me down like the piece of crap I am? All right, Luis. Here you go. Biatch. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Arthur on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey, Dad. Son, how are you? Oh man, Dad, I gotta tell you some short story, and I really need an advice. Okay. I'm with this girl for two years, right? Uh, first couple of months, I was taking care of her, you know, presents and stuff, just like any other man would do, right? And after I got sick of her, because you know. We couldn't get along, but she was just a nice person. But once I tried breaking up and she couldn't go and stuff like that, so eventually I stopped spending any money, not only on herself, but even on myself, so she started spending money on herself. So basically I got sick of everything because every time I was going out and doing my stuff because I was sick of everything, right? So she, she would take care of me, but she would give me this bad, I mean, everything was getting winners anyway. Long story short, I basically broke up yesterday, and uh, since yesterday, 182 phone calls, I mean, missed calls and text messages. 182? 182. You're serious? That, well, uh, she uh, she's not rich, but she, she has a good job. You know, she's no, no, not but, rich. No, no, no. I said you're not serious. No, I'm 100% serious, Tom. 182 calls. <laughs> yep, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I cannot even make, I mean, I put my phone down, I mean, lower the ring down so I can sleep the whole night. She didn't sleep the whole night. She had to work at 6 o'clock in the morning. I know she had to wake up. Nope, 
she didn't sleep, man. It's not a, well, my question is, should I abuse her, let her take care of me and do whatever she wants with me and stuff like that, but I'll do on the side whatever I want to do just because she took care of me? Should I well, do the same thing? Like you a run the did? risk. You run the risk that a chick like this is psychotic. Well, uh, I'm, I was about to sometimes, you know, kill myself. It's crazy. But in one case, man, I don't spend nothing. I mean, first time I started it, and after I was like, you know what? I, I, I don't want to leave with you. I'm not going to pay nothing. So and stuff like that. She, she'll do. She'll do everything. But once in a while, she actually fights and gives me a hard time. And then and I go out, and I'm not even coming back and stuff. So within the last two but years, what, I, what I'm saying, then, aren't you worried? Fun. Aren't you worried she'll find out you're boning somebody else and then oh. do something really kind of like trying to kill you? Well, she knows that I do stuff on the side. I told her, you know what? I'm going with the flow. You want to stay, stay, have fun. I mean, once in a while, we'll have fun. But so I'm going. You know, once in a while, I go and I don't come back and do my stuff on the side. Because, you know, I cannot take this seriously. I was taking it seriously, but we just couldn't get along. So my question is, would you be able to stay with a girl like that just because she takes care of you? No, no. You know what? I, I'd be afraid. I would be afraid of what she might do to me next. I'd be afraid. When they get too clingy like that, that's dangerous. I call those human lint. I think it's dangerous. But good luck to you. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Here's Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Great. First, to first time caller, long time listener. Love it. Anyways, just the other day, uh, I went to Foxfire after hearing all that about it on your show. And let me tell you, it is true. True. Really? Let this, yes. About 35-year-old lady... There's apartments right next door, in case you didn't know. Actually, apartments, motels. Yeah. And fully everything paid for, Tom. Everything. Now, and? she won't stop. Now, I can't get her letting go of my phone. 10, 15 text messages a day. Yeah. She wanted to get nailed, and you nailed her. I guess <laughs> you nailed her good. And that was it. But she pays for everything. Right. But uh, they, 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 there's a price for that. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm wondering is, what do you think, what's your advice on this? Should I, uh... You know what my advice is on it? No, well, the, 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 you're not getting it for free. If you can't make an outgoing phone call, if she's constantly haranguing you, I mean, that's not free. Yeah, that's true. So I should, uh, drop it? Of course! You got what you wanted. Move on. All right, Tom. I appreciate the advice. Can you take me out with a bong toke? I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our telephone number. Have you ever had a woman like just tell you she was in love with you after one date? What was that all about? Danny, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, it's an honor, big fan. Um, I had this girl once, like I was at a restaurant, and she was a waitress, really cute, and she, like, um, she hit on me, and, like, you know, in the course of our first date, she was talking to me about, like, you know, exactly what you were talking about, like, how she had this feeling about me, you know, and then we made a little mock, you know, like a marriage certificate and I signed it but then like you know so I went along with it and then after three months man I got married to her you know she talked me into marrying her and we went to Las Vegas and we did it and I why did she through. wait 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 why did you let yourself be talked into that I, I'm, I'm that typical point Dexter you talk about I was a nice guy all my life never got any play and this was like the first cute girl I ever came across that was interested in me hey hey zero tolerance Zero tolerance policy. You're out! One curse word and you're out. You gotta learn. Folks, you gotta learn. No F word, no S word, no C word. This is not the internet. This is not YouTube. It's not MySpace, not Facebook. It's not your own website. It's a federally licensed radio facility. 
They don't let you say those words on the radio, and if you don't know that, you're going to learn the hard way. I hate to be a, a, a school marm about it, but we're having to bleep every single call now. It's over the top. So there's your deal. Jesus. Jose on the top like his show. Hello. Hola, Tomas. Hola, Jose. Long t- first time, long time, Tom. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad to finally get through to you. And I, I got to tell you, for the last couple of years I've been listening to you, man, everything you say is right. Thank you. And he's like, my gosh. It's like this guy is like, he can, he's a four, he should be a fortune teller. You know, you know everything. And, I, and, because it's all happened to me. Well, thank you for the advice. Uh, I had this one, this one gal, you know, that I met, you know, talked for a couple hours and so forth. And, you know, we went out, you know, the first day and so forth. And, you know, you know, I was only after one thing. So on the second day and so forth, you know, we were getting, you know, obviously touching each other and so forth. And then she breaks out. You know, that she loves me. I'm like, what? Oh, it's okay. You know, if I get pregnant, my aunt, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's just, I just dropped. It was like, no. I mean, I haven't even boned her, and she's telling me all this. Oh, you're killing me. So I, I just like, oh, you know, I got to go. You know, I, I got to. Yeah, I have other things to do. So I, Oh, no kidding. You got to go. I'll say thank you for the call. It's the Tom Likas Show.